Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I am a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about using graphs to solve linear equations and inequalities. And I decided to split my lectures up into smaller segments so that I don't have hour-long uh, videos. Instead, I'll split them into maybe 10-15 minute video chunks so that it's, uh, if there's a something you want to focus on you can focus on that and something else you don't want to focus on you don't have to focus on that but for this lecture here um, or at least this group of lectures we're going to focus on solving linear equations using graphs and that requires to, requires us to actually graph a linear equation and we're also going to go ahead and solve linear inequalities using graphs now this is not often done in normal intermediate algebra courses uh, however, I find that this is an interesting approach to solving equations. There's a few prerequisites. Uh, you have to know how to graph using a Cartesian coordinate system, you know, plot points, that type of thing. You should be able to easily solve a linear equation at this point. And when I say solve a linear equation, um, and there should be an S on there, solving a linear equations, you should be able to solve a linear equation like 3x um, plus 2 uh, is equal to 17 or something like that. Or the more challenging 3 sevenths x minus 1 third is equal to 0.8 or something like that. Those uh, not implies or I shouldn't put an implication there, I should put the word or. Uh, those are things you should be able to solve. You should be able to build a table of values. Um, this one in blue, owning a graphing calculator, it's not a necessity for my students at this level. However, I'm going to talk about a graphing calculator and what you can do with it in this section. And finally, uh, another thing that you'll need is you'll need to know how to understand inequalities. What does it mean to have something like x is less than 7? What does that mean? Or what does it mean that x is greater than or equal to, uh, let's say, 1.25? Right? So you should understand what that means. In this specific video, part A, we're going to solve for y in terms of x and build some tables of solutions and then do some graphing. That's what we're going to practice, the skill set we're going to practice here before we uh, move on into actually solving linear equations using graphs. We'll go ahead and start off with a problem here that, again, you should have done tons of these in a previous course since this is for an intermediate algebra class. However, it's still good to see something like this every once in a while. Let's go ahead and graph this, and we're going to do this uh, by point plotting not by using any other special technique that uh, you may know, but we're just going to plot some points. Not uh, the best way to actually graph an equation, but one that'll work. Now, when you're trying to graph an equation like this, there's a couple things you can do. You can build a table of values, and I'll just start by showing you uh, how I would write a table of values, x, y, right? You have an x column and a y column. And then you would choose values, either for x or for y. Often, we choose values for x. Well, if I'm going to choose a value for x, like x equals 1, let's just pretend, when my equation's written like this, I have to do th this whole business 3 times 1, because I'm letting x equal 1, minus 7y is equal to 10. And then you say, okay, well, that implies I'm going to, well, that's 3 minus 7y is equal to 10. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. That means I have negative 7y is equal to 7, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by a negative 7. I get y is equal to a negative 1. Oh, great. But now when I move on, I say, well, okay, let's let x equal 2. You have 3 times 2 minus 7y is equal to 10. Okay, great. That means that you have 6 minus 7y is equal to 10. Or, in other words, you can subtract 6 from both sides to get negative 7y is equal to 4. And then you can divide both sides by a negative 7 to get that y is equal to a negative 4 over 7. But if I keep building this table of values, or this table of solutions, if you will, I will always do the same set of operations. In other words, I will always subtract from both sides that 3 times 1 or 3 times 2 or 3 times whatever I plug in. And then I'll end up dividing both sides by a negative 7. So there's a little bit of a faster way. If you know you're going to build a table of values 
it's much easier to solve this equation right away for a variable. Choose a variable and solve for that variable. Here I'm going to solve for y. That tends to be the variable we always solve for. You don't have to, it's just a tradition. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, s solve this for y here. When I solve this for y, all I'm going to do is add, um, oh, I'm sorry, not add, forgive me. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. When I subtract 3x from both sides, you see I have 3x minus 3x on the left-hand side, so those the, the x terms disappear. And the left-hand side is just a measly little negative 7y. The right-hand side I have 10 minus 3x. And those cannot combine, that's not 7x or anything like that. The number 10 is definitely different, a completely unlike term than a 3x. Okay, those are two completely unlike terms. But I'm not done solving for y yet. I want to now divide both sides by a negative 7. Negative 7 over a negative 7 turns into 1, so that's like saying 1y on the left-hand side, or in other words, just regular old y on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I just have this nice, pretty-looking 10 minus 3x all over 7. And let me remind you that that is the same as saying 10 sevenths minus 3x over 7. It's saying those two statements are exactly the same. It doesn't matter to me which one you work with, but uh, it may matter to your instructor if I'm not your instructor. But once you've solved this equation for y, you can now substitute any value you want for x. For example, and it's, uh, by the way, and it's much faster than what we were doing a moment ago. For example, if I substitute an x equals 0, um, if I plug it into this first version, it's pretty quick. It's just 10 minus 0 over 7, or in other words, 10 over 7. If I substitute in 1, I will get uh, that y is equal to 10 minus 3 times 1 over 7, or 7 over 7, which is uh, 1. Did I mess something up? Oh, I did. There's supposed to be a, Somebody's yelling at me right now. There's supposed to be a negative 7 underneath here. Sorry about that. Actually, that opens the door for me to talk about something here. Um, when I divided both sides by a negative 7, uh, you saw that these negative 7s should cancel, and you have a single y. And uh, the right-hand side, I have this 10 minus 3x divided by negative 7, which I forgot to rewrite. My fault, but I caught it, so that's good. The reason why I caught it, by the way, is because we had done a little bit of work earlier, and I remembered that that was a negative 1. Okay, but something I want to mention, it's common that people do not like to see negatives in denominators. So if you have something like that, you can pull that negative right out front here. So this is the same thing as saying a negative 10 minus 3x all over 7. Okay, so in other words, I just pulled the negative out in front of this fraction. It's a negative version of that fraction. Okay? If you wanted to apply this negative to the numerator, you can. It would just distribute to each of the objects in the numerator. So you would get a negative 10 plus 3x in the numerator, all over 7. And if you wanted to split it now, you would get a negative 10 over 7 plus 3x over 7. And again, if you plugged in to any of these versions here, if you plugged in x equals 0, you would, like into this one right here, if you plugged x equals 0 into there, you'd have 0 over 7 for that fraction, which is just 0, and a negative 10 sevenths. So when x is 0, y is a negative 10 over 7. When x is, and let me erase this, when x is 1, according to this uh, equation right here, or I'll go ahead and use this one, doesn't really matter, when x is 1, we get the following. Negative 10 plus 3 times 1 is just 3 over 7. So negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. Over 7, that's a negative 1. When x is 2, you know, y is equal to negative 10 plus 3 times 2, which is 6, all over 7. Negative 10 plus 6 is a negative 4 over 7. Because I did all the pre-work, I could do this all day long. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to a negative 10 plus 
3 times 3 is 9 all over 7, or in other words, negative 10 plus 9 is a negative 1 over 7. And like I said, I could do this all day long. So it's a, it's a very nice way to build a table of values to, by just making sure that you um, solve for y first. The second part of really, or the third part, is the first part, what we did is we solved for y, and then we made this table of values. Now all I need to do is graph this, because that was my original question. Now all I'm doing here is I'm just creating a set of axes freehand again, because... Uh, very difficult actually for me to draw this freehand. I always give that as an excuse. But Now when you choose the axes, or the scale your axes in other words, you want to pay attention to what your x values are and what your y values are. I see my x values are like 0, 1, 2, 3. They're nice pretty numbers. So I will make oops, each hash mark a nice unit value. Over here would be a negative 1. Even though I didn't plug in x equals a negative 1, I'm just putting that there. The y values would be silly for me to call this y equals 1, y equals 2, y equals 3, because the fact is that those aren't, um, those are too large of steps. I see these, the y values go from a negative 1 seventh all the way to a negative 10 sevenths. So I might consider it this way. I might actually even do it in terms of sevenths. Uh, if I really wanted to. Uh, it might be very difficult, but, but I could do it. Uh, in fact, maybe I will. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's a negative 1. 8, 9, 10. That's a negative 10 of those sevenths. Here's a negative 1 of those sevenths, negative 2 of those sevenths, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 of those sevenths, negative 6, negative 7 of those sevenths, which is a negative 1, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10 of those sevenths. Okay. And now all I'm going to do is plot these points. When x is 0, and let me choose a different color for plotting, I'll use red. When x is 0, y is a negative 10 sevenths. So I'm at x equals 0, y equals, well, right down here, a negative 10 sevenths. And when x is 1, so right here, y is a negative 1 or a negative 7 sevenths, which is right about here. Okay. And when x is 2, so I hop over 1, 2 steps, uh, I go down a negative 4 of those 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is right about here. Now, if I do this right, they should all be on a line. And finally, when x is equal 3, y is a negative 1 seventh, which is right about there. I'll even label these points, 3 comma negative 1 seventh. I'll label two of them, just because I don't want to sit here all day and continually label all of them. This is 1 comma uh, negative 1. Uh, and now I'll connect those dots with a curve, which ends up looking like a line if I've drawn this correctly. Okay. And remember, this is a line uh, because the equation originally had the form ax plus by is equal to c. In fact, the initial equation was 3x minus 7y is equal to 10. That's a linear equation. And since the powers on each of the variables are just a single little unit there, uh, I know that this is going to graph out to be a line. Now, let's just do one more example before I end this part, and then you can start the video for the next part. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's uh, graph x over 8 plus y over 21 is equal to 1. And before I continue on, I just want to mention that uh, it's often very important to find the intercepts, a concept we've talked about in the past. Um, so I will often start this problem just by saying, well, when x is 0, what's y? And when y is 0, what's x? But even before that, I see it's an equation, and I see this equation has fractions. A common theme with, uh, with any problem that I start to kind of work with that has an equation, if I see fractions in it, it might be even to my detriment to do this all the time, but I still do it. Uh, if I see an equation with fractions, I find the LCD, and I multiply both sides by it. 
You can only do this with equations, so that you can multiply both sides because, well, equations have sides, a left side and a right side. Expressions, if there's no equal sign, uh, expressions don't have two sides. They're just, a, they're just a statement. But in this case, I have uh, an equation. The LCD is just 8 times 21, so I think it's 168. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 168. Let me show that action right here. I have x plus 8 plus y over 21 is equal to 1. And I'm going to multiply both sides oops, by 168. And what's nice is when I do that, uh, this distributes, this 168 distributes to each of these terms here. And this 168 just multiplies that one. Well, it turns out that 8 goes 168 21 times, so this is just going to be 21x plus, and then 21 goes into 168 8 times. So I get something like that. It's a very nice equation. Uh, no more fractions, right? Now, again, um, just a good habit to get into, even if you're being asked to solve this equation for y, which I'm going to be doing in a moment, I'll still find the intercepts. To find the intercepts, we let x equal 0, and we find out what y is. And then we let y equal 0, and we find out what the resulting value of x is. So if we were to let x equal 0, then essentially this would disappear. So if x were 0, we'd have 8y is equal to 168. And if you divide both sides by 8, here you'll get that y is 21. So let me go ahead and write that in here. On the other hand, had you let y be 0, then all that would disappear and you have 21x is equal to 168. So I divide both sides by 21, I would get x is equal to 8. Reintroduce that and write this. So you see right now that we already have two points. There's no real need to go any further, but sometimes you're just asked to solve for y. It's a good habit to get into. So let's just go ahead and, and finish this out that way. If I'm going to solve for y, that means I want to get y by itself on the on one side. To do that, I'll subtract 21x from both sides. And we get this beautiful 8y is equal to 168 minus 21x. And now I will divide both sides by a positive 8. I have to remind myself uh, that I'm dividing by a positive 8. And I get something like the following. y is equal to 168 minus 21x all over 8. And again, let me remind you that there's two ways to write that. You can you keep it like that, or you could split the fraction. Most math instructors want you to split this fraction. It just depends on who you have for an instructor. But I know 8, if I split the fraction, let me actually write it as a split fraction first, so you can see what I'm doing. 8 goes into 168 21 times, so this is just going to turn into 21 minus 21 over 8x. So there's three different versions that you could use here. I don't care which. Um, they're all, I guess, somewhat interesting. But I will tell you, um, just like I said, mentioned a moment ago, your instructor will often like you to use this format. I don't know why. It's just a habit. I think most instructors have been taught that, and so they just think that you should put, do that. If you are going to use this format, then choose wisely for your values of x. Choose multiples of 8. And the reason why is because if x is 8, well, then that 8 will cancel with that 8, right? So we'll just go ahead and, and show you why here. Uh, you get 21 and then minus 21 over 8 times 8. And you see those two cancel nicely. So it's 21 minus 21 or 0, which is exactly what we got here when we plugged in 8. Let's try another multiple of 8. Let's try 16. You get y is equal to 21 minus 21 eighths times 16. And in this case, 8 goes into 16 twice. 
Okay, so this is going to be 21 minus 21 times 2, or in other words, minus 42, which is going to be a negative 21. So when x is 16, y is a negative 21. You try another multiple of 8. It doesn't have to be positive. It could be negative. Like a negative 8 is absolutely fine. That would be y equals 21 minus 21 eighths times, well, a negative 8. 8 cancels with that 8. You have a negative times a negative. That'll be, actually I should write it down here, that'll be a 21 plus 21, or in other words, a 42. That's enough points for me. Let's go ahead and graph that out. And notice that the scale of this for the y values is pretty large, actually. We're not talking one-sevenths here. We're talking, we're near values of 20s and 40s and 50s. So um, our y scaling is going to be kind of large. Our x scaling might be somewhat large as well. So let me show you an interesting way to scale this. I'll uh, go ahead and open a new page here. And I'll draw a crooked set of axes because my freehand drawing is not the best in the world, but that doesn't matter. Now remember my x values ranged from a negative 8 all the way to a positive 16. Okay, so let me just go out here for my furthest x value. There's 16, halfway to there is 8, and that same distance on the other side will be a negative 8. And let me just throw some values in here. That's a negative 4, and that's a 4, and that's going to be a 12. So I'm scaling my x-axis to be in steps of 4. The y-axis, on the other hand, is not so easy to scale because the fact is the y-axis has uh, these 21s and 42s. I'm going to scale it in 10s. So this will be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I'll just call this 40 here. Uh, this will be 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50. I'll write negative 40 here so you can see that. And now I'm just going to plot the values that we got. Looking back here, we got 0, 21 and 8, 0. So when x is 0, y is 21. So that's, oh, let me plot that using, it's probably right about there. Not too accurate, but and then eight comma zero. That's very accurate. That's right there. And let's try the other values that we got here. Sixteen comma negative twenty one. So at sixteen, I'm down, pretty far down to a negative twenty one. And let me go ahead and say it's right about here. I might be slightly off there. And finally x equals negative 8, y equals positive 42. So at negative 8, we're up here at a positive 42, somewhere around here. Okay. If you connect those dots, they should sort of exist on a line. And again, I'm freehanding it, so it's not the best line in the world. If I had a ruler, I would use it. So there's some information on um, solving an equation for y, or for a variable essentially, building a table of values, and plotting points to get a graph. In the next video we're going to discuss how to um, use the graph of an equation to solve an equation.